welcome to another edition of the Pile Driver Weekly. My name is Electric Eric Davidson, and this is my co-host, Mr. Ace Larson. We got a big show this week. We got two pay-per-views to cover, so I'm going to unfortunately skip over OVW results this week, uh, just to save us a little bit of time. Um, but, you know, support OVW, go see them Wednesday nights at the Davis Arena. Bell time's about 7.30, I think. Cheat night out, only about five bucks to get in. And you can watch them on TV Saturdays at noon on WBNA 21. All right, we're going to go right to Impact here. Um, and they're in Arkansas again this week. I don't know if it was a, a taped one. I don't, I don't know if they're doing... Are they all of them? I, I was thinking they were, but maybe not. Because uh, they're in the same location they were in last week. But um, the show opens with Aces and Eights coming out, um, trying to recruit Styles. Uh, D'Lo's crying about being fired from the TNA office. And then out comes Angle, uh, followed by Joseph Park, uh, Samoa Joe, Magnus, Eric Young. And that's going to be a 10-man tag on that show tonight. Uh, then we see Joey Ryan backstage with Brooke. He wants to be the new knockouts uh, referee since Taryn is now uh, wrestling. And that segues into we got a match between Tara and Gail Kim versus Taryn Terrell and Velvet Sky. And um, Joey Ryan's the referee, and he's being all perverted and getting handsy with the girls and he, 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 he's not counting when they go for pins and stuff because he's too busy looking up their skirts but um, <laughs> it, it was basically a terrible match uh, Gail and Tara get the win uh, then we go to a contract signing between Aries and Rude and Chavo and Hernandez for the uh, tag team titles and that's going to be a two out of three falls match. Mm -hmm. And if Chavo and Hernandez lose, they can no longer team together. Huh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, added some stipulations there. And for once, at a contract signing, there was no fighting. No fighting <laughs> yeah. contract signing. Is this at the Fort Bruce, uh, Christie show? I believe so, yes. Yeah. So that's, that's just a week away now. That sounds uh, like an exciting match. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, should be good. Then we take a look at... Uh, the two contestants in tonight's gut check, that's going to be Adam Pierce and Magno. And, you know, both these guys are pretty seasoned. Uh, you know, I know especially Adam Pierce, I've seen him wrestle. He, like I said, former NWA champion, good wrestler, he, real good wrestler. Um, Magno, I'm not as familiar with, but they, they put on a pretty good match there. And uh, both guys looked pretty good. Magno flubbed a couple of you know spots, but it, all in all, he, he still looked pretty good. Pierce steals the win with a roll-up. I think he even pulled the tights there, but uh, pretty good showing there, and I'd like to see both those guys on the roster, really. Um, Magno's got that Lucha Libre style, and it, but he's, he's kind of big for a luchador, uh, taller than your average luchador guy. Then we see Anderson... Mike Knox and Doc from the Aces and Aids approach Styles backstage. Uh, he still doesn't say nothing. They hand him what they call a cut. Here's your cut. It's a, you know like a jacket or a vest, whatever, with their emblem on it. And tell, tell them to think about it. They want him to join. Then we see another recap of the whole Bully Ray saga, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we see Park and Angle backstage. Nothing really going on there. Then Hogan comes out, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he, call, he calls out Styles, and uh, Styles finally says a couple words here. Uh, Hogan's basically telling him he needs his help. And then uh, Storm comes out once again to confront Styles. And Styles clams up and walks off. And he still hasn't said anything. Uh, he, he, like I said, he said a few words to Hogan, like, I think he said, you want me to help you? Or something like that. And then that's when Storm came out and he, he stopped talking again. But 
Hogan ends up basically giving Styles an ultimatum, saying, look, you know, I need to know where you stand. You know, you got till next week to let me know. Are you with us? Or are you with Aces and Eights? So, then we go to the three-way contenders match, X-Division match here, between Sanjay Dutt, the returning Petey Williams, and uh, Mason Andrews. A uh, pr pretty good match. Um, it's good to see Petey back. And he actually gets the win, and he'll be in the next you know, three-way championship match for the X Division title there, whenever that may be. I don't know if they're going to have that at Corpus Christi next week or what. They just said whenever it is. Then we see Ace and Nate's backstage again. Uh, Bully has this envelope he's going to present to Brooke. You know, is it divorce papers? We don't know. What is it? Who cares? Cruise tickets. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you say that, but and you'll see why here shortly. But Then, then we go to the, the ten-man tag. Um, Knox, Doc, Bischoff, Briscoe, Devon of the Aces and Eights versus Angle, Eric Young, Samoa Joe, Magnus, and Parks. Uh, Aces and Eights win after Doc delivers a low blow to, uh, to Park. Um, not, not a real eventful match there. <clears throat> and it went about how you would expect it to. Then we see Hogan and Brooke backstage more gibberish. Uh, <laughs> then Bully, you know, finally comes out to deliver this envelope, and Brooke comes out, and she's hoping it's divorce papers, or so she says. But it turns out it's a front row ticket to next week's show at Corbin's <laughs> Christie, because <laughs> he wants to see, she, he wants her to see him kick uh, Jeff, Jeff Hardy's ass. ass again. So then Hardy comes out, and they start brawling. Uh, and that's where my DVR cut off. So I'm assuming that's how it ended. I didn't actually see the show actually end. Sorry about that. Um, I may have to start taping over on Impact as well. But uh, that's basically Impact. You know, I, I get the feeling. I could be wrong because I was about 50% wrong on Mania. But uh, <clears throat> all right. I, I, get, I get the impression maybe... I think Brooke might end up kind of doing the Stephanie McMahon thing here mm -hmm. with the aces and eights. Like she's playing the babe in the woods role. Mm -hmm. but it's going to turn out she's in on it with Bully Ray the whole time. Mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of, because nobody really likes Brooke. So it would make sense uh, to kind of put her in that heel role. Because she's not really doing anything. Either. No. Uh, she's the so-called, what, VP of the the knockouts division. Yeah. But, I mean, what does that really yeah. require? Whatever that so anyway, that's Impact. We're going to move on here to SmackDown. And this is going to be the easiest SmackDown to cover ever because it was basically just a recap show and a hype show. They should uh, just skip this SmackDown for us. Yeah, they right? really should. They, a, a majority of the show was JBL and Cole at uh, Fan Access. Access. Yeah. yeah. Um, only three matches to cover here. We're going to run down them real quick so we can get to the good stuff. Um, Ryback versus uh, Primo and Epico to open things up. Not much of a match. Uh, Ryback gets the win with another double shell shot. Uh, then we had the Scholars and the Bellas come out, and they're, they were impersonating tons of funk and the Funkodactyls. It was kind of reminiscent of DX, you know, when they... Uh, impersonated the Nation of Domination yeah. several years back. Semi-humorous, uh, you know. It's almost getting to that point, though, with Rose and Sandow. Yeah, but, you know, Sandow, he, he's good on the mic and yeah. good at insulting yeah. the crowd. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed that part of it. Then uh, the, the real, you know, tons of funk and funk doctors come out and clean house real quick, and then they dance. So, anyway, that wasn't even really a match. <laughs> <laughs> and then the final match of the night, we get Swagger versus Kofi Kingston. Wow. Yeah. But, you know, it wasn't a terrible match. It wasn't a great match. Uh, Kofi actually hung in there longer than I thought he would. Um, had a pretty decent showing, but, you know, just kind of, like you said, like, Fluff. yeah, pointless, not, you know, just a warm-up match for Mania there. But, uh, 
Yeah, that's SmackDown because the rest was just recaps and a bunch of, you know, hype for Mania. And we've gone over that 200 times already. I'm not going to go over it again. So that's SmackDown. And uh, on to the good stuff. On wow. to the good stuff now. And boy, was it. Oh, wow. Uh, I guess we're going to cover Supercard Ring of Honor here first. You want to take this one, Ace? I'll you want to start, start it off? off? Live, New York City, the Hammerstein Ballroom. ACH and Darius Thomas versus QT Marshall and the special <laughs> guest <laughs> tag Mystery team partner. partner. Mystery partner. Yeah. Hardy <laughs> Evans. <laughs> Yeah, and I thought Misery Partner was going to be somebody good. Uh, yeah, you can scratch that. Yeah. Uh, well, it was a decent opener, a lot of good yeah. high spots. Uh, yeah. ACH and Adarius, good young uh, tag team. Absolutely. Uh, really good opening match. Crowd was in it from the beginning, like every Ring of Honor show. So, very good opener. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. He, he, it just had that big event feel yeah. already. And, and anything from the Hammerstein, you know, the, the crowd's always, you know, crazy there. Um yeah, I thought it was you know a pretty impressive match really, and even R. D. Evans, even though he's a clown, actually looks half decent yeah. in the ring. Yeah. Um, and I believe I picked uh, Marshall, Marshall and, and Evans to win that because it was a mystery partner, but uh, A. C. H. and Darius Thomas get the win there. And what do we got next there? Well, we got Shelton coming out. Shelton Benjamin comes out and. Uh, no Charlie Haas tonight. Yeah, it was supposed to be Shelton versus Haas. I don't know what the deal is there with that. So we had Mike Bennett and Maria. Yeah. And wow. Wow. <laughs> Maria. Maria. <laughs> I couldn't even focus on the match, yeah. Charlie. Really. Oh, yeah. I she mean, was shaking and grinding. and Them shorts get any shorter. She mm -hmm. might as well just not wear any. The uh, best part, though, was the you screw punk chance. From the yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was pretty. <laughs> Shelton called out Cheeseburger. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, going back and forth there. Then Bennett Coldcox Cheeseburger. That's in his face a little yeah. bit. Cheeseburger, the schlep rock of Ring of Honor. <laughs> <laughs> that poor pitiful guy. Yeah. He's just so pathetic. Yeah, man. he makes me look like a beefcake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Still, though, Maria's. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, just uh, rear end parts. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. Gosh, very nice, very nice. But okay, match. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I would have rather seen Shelton than Haas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you know, I, I picked Shelton to win that one. Bennett ends up getting the win, but to me that doesn't go against my predictions because it wasn't supposed to be Bennett. Yeah. You know? So uh, then what do we got there, Ace? Then we get. Oh man, I almost have to prepare myself in the seat for this yeah. one. Jay Lethal versus Michael Elgin, and oh man, where did I begin? Wow. I mean, spectacular is really all I can say. Just, uh, I'd say match of the night there. I would say, and I may be going out on a limb with this one, this may be the best match that I have seen since Punk and seen it in yeah. 2011. I mean, I would definitely have to put this in there for a match of the year oh, yeah. candidate. Oh, yeah. Uh, I knew it was going to be good, but it, it even surpassed my expectations. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10. Yeah, enough just, I mean, I mean, just spectacular effort by both guys. What, 25, 30 minutes. It, I mean, it was just near falls, counters. I mean, just, uh, I mean. What wrestling should be. Yeah. It, just amazing match. And uh, I can't say enough good things about it. That match was worth the price alone. Yeah. yeah that, and more, really. That, it was worth the price of the pay-per-view by itself. Uh, so, Elgin ends up getting the win, and uh, I believe that puts him in line for a title shot. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I believe that was a top contenders match, if I remember correctly. And then Scum attacks, right? We go right. Yeah, Scum comes team. out immediately after and jumps both of them. Um, and then that goes right into Scum versus Team Ring of Honor. Uh, Whitmer, Mondo, Briscoe, Coleman, and Alexander. Uh, that match was just okay. Yeah, it was kind of all over the place. Yeah, so. it, it was yeah, kind of a, a throwaway there. It, Scum gets the win, as expected. Uh, then... Recap, Steen and Briscoe. Yeah. Um, you know, they're showing all the all the times that Briscoe got this close you know, yeah. to, to winning the Ring of Honor title over the years. And, a lot uh, of good matches there. Yeah. 
uh, e even I you know, didn't realize just how many times he had been oh so close. And uh, then we go to Carl Anderson, yeah, and Roderick Strong, Machine Gun Anderson, and Roderick Strong. This is good. This is yeah, good match. a good match, and uh, it's just. It was a really good match, but man, it, anything after yeah, Lethal yeah, Elgin yeah. was just, it wasn't a letdown by any means. I mean, good, solid pay-per-view all around, yeah. but man, that, that match just yeah, it stole the show. They should have put it later on the card, really. Uh, but yeah, uh, Anderson gets the win here. Uh, looked pretty good coming back, and uh, that's another one I predicted correctly there. And then we get the three-way dance for the TV title. What'd you think of that one, Ace? It was okay. I mean, once again, Lethal and Elgin's still hard to follow. I mean, it, it was an okay match. The crowd was anti-Hardy, you know. Yeah. Real anti-Hardy. Yeah. But, I mean, it was okay. Uh, yeah, just all right. Taven retains. I, I, I had Hardy winning that one, but... Uh, can't can't predict them all. He was eliminated first. Yeah, he was the first one out. Uh, so then we go to another really good one. Yeah. Whew. The tag title match: the American Wolves versus Red Dragon. Man, it, it unbelievable. It, yeah, it, it was that close to being as good as Elgin versus Lethal. They were both spectacular matches. I put them dead even. Yeah, I, mean, I, I would almost have to. I, I mean. I would say the Lethal Elgin match edged it out a little bit because it the tag match started out a bit slow. Yeah, it, 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 yeah picked, it did. It yeah. picked up and it ended up redeeming itself by yeah. far. Oh yeah. But it started out a little slow. Um, but I guess that's you know it was intentional. Um, but yeah, man, you, anytime you get the Wolves against you know Fish and O'Reilly, it's it's gonna be good. Um, another one that I predicted correctly, the champs retain here. They've been on a hell of a roll. And, uh, and yeah, and after that match, after Lethal and Elgin and that tag team match, I mean, how, how can WrestleMania 29, from a wrestling it, standpoint, hang with those two matches alone? It can't. It, it, it can't. And it's just... I, I, and it's not that WWE doesn't have the talent on their roster. They do. They just won't allow these guys to go full tilt like they do in Ring of Honor. They they yeah. they hold them back. And it's like you said, if Ring of Honor had WWE's budget, oh. their bankroll, WWE would be in trouble. They'd be fast. in serious trouble. Um, it, you know, I, I don't think that they'd be in danger of going out of business, but they'd have some serious competition yeah. on their hands. Yeah. And I think that would make wrestling all around better. Yeah. Uh, then we get to the main event, um, Steen versus Briscoe for the for the Ring of Honor World heavy, Heavyweight Heavyweight Title. Heavyweight title. Getting tongue tied there because it's so awesome. It was yeah, it was another awesome match. Really, really good match. Um, now and here's where I have to kind of criticize Ring of Honor a little bit, which I hate to do because I love Ring of Honor. They've got to me, the best in-ring wrestling action on the planet. Um, but they have time and time again had trouble with these online pay-per-views. They've had technical issues over and over again. And, you know, two or three times now they've changed companies as far as providers and said, oh, this time we're getting it all fixed. It's going to all be taken care of. And, you know, then one pay-per-view will go good, and, you know, they'll reel you back in. And then, it, you know, we get to the main event. There's, you know, about three and a half, four minutes left on the show. And it just stops. And it freezes. And it's like, what? And it starts buffering, and you, you try to get it to work. It won't work. It, and it's not, it wasn't my device, because everybody had this same problem at the same time. I did some reading on their website and on their Facebook page. Everybody had the exact same problem. And, you know, I could even overlook the fact that it froze, but I can't overlook the fact that when I did get it to work, as soon as it comes back on, the first thing you hear is, we have a new champion. 
So it blew the ending for us, and that is kind of hard to overlook. And so, Ring of Honor, we love you, but I'm begging you, please, get a cable deal done. Just do your pay-per-views on cable, because obviously the internet pay-per-view thing isn't working. Um, you're going to end up losing a lot of fans. People are going to stop buying your pay-per-views altogether. I stopped for a couple months, but I just I love Ring of Honor so much I had to I had to give them a second chance, third chance. Um, and it was just the one glitch, but it was a big glitch, yeah. a huge glitch. You you don't you don't want that happening. It's just it, it's bad for business. So you know get that taken care of. But other than that. Awesome pay-per-view. I mean, worth twice the price. And, you know, you pay 15 bucks for Ring of Honor and get a better pay-per-view than you do for $70 from WWE, in my personal opinion. I agree. Um, and, but that pretty much wraps it. You know, like I said, we had a new champion. Jay Briscoe finally wins the big one. Um, I, I honestly didn't think he was going to. I had Steam winning that. And another thing, um, Scum came out and tried to interfere in the match. Hardy came in, and Steen kicked him and threw him out of the ring. So you know, it looks like Steen's done with Scum. Um, I don't know where the whole thing's going to go from there, but uh, and he shook hands and everything. Yeah, he, he even you know shook hands, adhered to the code of honor with Briscoe. Uh, so. Oh, maybe uh, Steen's not such a bad guy after all. But anyhow, congratulations to Jay Briscoe on finally winning the big one. And now we move on to the big one. To the uh, WrestleMania 29. Uh, Ace, you want to kick us off here? Maybe well, should we start with the uh, pre-show results? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, Touch on that real quick. Yeah. Because <laughs> And then we'll, you know, discuss what? that further. Yeah. What for, the, well, let's leave it this for right now. What in the hell was that all about, <laughs> first of all? Uh, you know, I hate to say it, but knowing what we know now. I, I, I called that one, you know, as far as the Miz wins, takes the Intercontinental title. But, you know, well, it was not really much to discuss here as far as the match. It was just okay. Yeah. Um, Nobody really. Shit, yeah, I mean, I mean you, you get stuck on the pre-show, and it, I, it makes no sense to me yeah. that the Intercontinental title match, that should be middle of the card, and it's on the pre-show. Uh, but we had kicking the whole thing off with Sheamus, Randy Orton, The Big Show versus The Shield, and The Shield wins. Yeah, which I saw coming, but I... I didn't see it going down the way it did. Nobody uh, turned heel, nothing, no... I guess Show kind of did, but he didn't... I mean, he didn't... It's not like he joined the Shield or right. anything. He just got fed up with Orton and Sheamus and knocked them both out. Yeah. Uh, but that was after the match. Yeah. That was after the fall. Um, it was just okay. Yeah. I mean, I, like what you'd see on Raw or SmackDown, yeah, honestly. N nothing to scream about. Um uh, I mean, it, like I said, it was just okay. Uh, what what we got next there, Grace? Mark Henry versus Rob. Oh, not Rob. It's Ryback. Ryback. Oh, just horrible. Uh, it, it, it seemed like it had some signs of life at times. Like, you know, a big spot could could save a match like that. You know, a big yeah. slam on the table or a big suplex out of the ring. But yeah, this was just. Ugh. It, it was. Oh. And, and, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I think I said, you know, clunker. I, I see this one being a clunker, but it was even worse than I thought it was going to be. So, some kind of botched, crazy finish? I mean, yeah, I, I think that was, that whole thing was just a busted play there. I, I, and it seemed like Ryback was legit, legit hurt, yeah. but then he does, at, afterwards he comes back in and does the shell shot. And he seemed fine the next night on Raw, so... And once again, this is the second match in a row. What did it mean? Because if you have Ryback beat Mark Henry, you propel him a little bit to get him out of that losing slump pair of views. Yeah. But you don't have that happen. You have Mark Henry win for what? Nothing. So here we go. Two matches already at WrestleMania. 
for, for, for nothing. Yeah. What, what and, do they mean? And, you know, we'll touch on Henry. You know, I would say, well, they did that to set Henry up versus Cena. Yeah. But we'll cover that more with, with Raw. Um, what we got next on the card there? Tag team titles. The tag title match. I'd be surprised. Though, yeah, if Kane and Daniel Bryan retained. Uh, yeah, I figured they were going to drop the belts here. I thought uh, Biggie Langston looked really good. For, yeah, for what? Yeah, for he showed out there. Yeah, for his first match on a big card yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, I thought he he held his own in there. Uh, yeah, the the chance retained. It, it was a decent match. Um, like I said I, I was kind of surprised. I, I thought Ziggler and Langston were going to take it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I agree with you as far as Biggie Langston. I, I yeah. thought he did pretty good. Uh, so, what do you think of the first three matches on WrestleMania so far? What are your thoughts? Pretty uh, so, so none stuff. of them can compare to a single match on the Ring of Honor show. That's true, and, and none of them really meant anything. <laughs> so, I mean, even with the Kane and Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler and Biggie Langston match, there was really no build up for this. Yeah, you know. So, it is what it is. Yeah. I <laughs> if, if Dolph and Big E had won, then maybe we could have seen it going somewhere, but nope, it didn't happen. Yeah. Um, and then next on the card, what did we have, Ace? Chris Jericho versus Fondango. Fondango. Um, Once again, I mean, it was, it was a pretty solid yeah. match. It just didn't uh, have a pay-per-view feel to it. Um, what do you think? I mean, it, it was kind of hard to have the pay-per-view feel because you've never even seen this guy wrestle before yeah. unless unless you saw him you know, down in Florida uh, with NXT or FCW. Um, but it, it's not just that. You know, they, they only built it for a couple of weeks. You know, that, that's... Nice it's thing. not enough time. It's not enough time. You got to build, you know, matches for WrestleMania. In my opinion, for months. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I'm old fashioned. I I think there should only be four pay per views a year. And you know, maybe I'm just out of touch with today's product. I but, still think they could do a little bit better with this. Yeah. They're going to try to propel a new star with Chris Jericho. They they got to have some yeah. kind of something there. But you know, Fandango does get the win. Uh, I, I predicted that one correctly, um, and I guess we'll see where he goes from here. But that's, you know, you would think that having him win over Jericho at Mania in his debut, they're looking to push this guy to the stars. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, they they start a lot of guys out like that, and then nothing, nothing. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, what we got next there, Ace? Was it Del Rio and Swagger for the World Heavyweight title is the next match, correct? Um, see, I got mine all out of order here. We were... Uh, that was it, yeah. Yeah, the, I, I believe it was. Yeah. I, I uh, you know, we were having a little bit of fun yeah. <laughs> for Mania. Yeah. We, some cool refreshments. Yeah, <laughs> some adult beverages. Yeah. And, and, I mean, I remember all the matches yeah. very clearly, uh, but... Yeah, it was Del Rio. I, I, I'm kind of going by my predictions here as far as the order. Uh, so I thought you might have a better order there than I did. Yeah, it was Del Rio and Swagger. Del Rio and Swagger, another one that I predicted correctly. Because, uh, more or less, probably because of the DUI. That's why he didn't win it, you think? Or not? I, I don't know. I, I wonder if that made a difference or not. It, it may have. Uh, it was okay. Yeah. Or, it wasn't bad, um, but there again, nothing to shout about. Um, yeah. It was just, it was just okay. Um, so now you think about this. Now we're we're five matches in, okay, to a four hour seventy dollar pay per view. The yeah. Super Bowl of pay per views for WWE, this multi billion dollar company, and not one of these matches holds a candle with anything we Ring of Honor did two nights before. Yeah, for fifteen bucks. For fifteen bucks. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, I mean, I, I know they're two different entities, but it, as much as Vince McMahon would like to deny it, it is pro wrestling. It is wrestling, 
WWE is still wrestling. Um, he likes to call sports entertainment. It's wrestling, man. You, you can call it anything you want. It's it's wrestling, and they they need to take a serious look at what they're doing as far as in ring performances and reevaluate themselves because you know I, I know that they appeal to the younger crowd that doesn't know any better, but you know you can you can have something for everybody. You know, you can satisfy your younger demographic without alienating guys like us, um, especially in a four-hour show. Yeah. I mean, put, you know. And even, did you notice there was hardly any backstage interviews yeah. or anything like that? Yeah. It's just, yeah. yeah. You know, here it is. Here it is. Here but it is. I guess they figure. They've recapped it enough. Yeah, already. they've talked enough, which they have. Yeah. So, anyhow, um, yeah, the champ retains there. Um so what wasn't a bad match. Uh, I'd give it maybe, you know. Six. Five or six. Yeah. Something like out that. of ten, yeah. yeah. Uh, then the next match, was Taker and Lesnar next? Sam Punk and Taker. Uh, oh, I mean, Triple H, Lesnar. They, yeah, they did yeah. Punk, Taker yeah. first. Punk and Taker was which, first. Which, to me, that should have been... The main event. The main event, <laughs> yeah. But now here we go. Some signs of life back into WrestleMania. For yeah. This match. Show Steeler. I give it a nine out of ten. Yeah. I, awesome. Yeah, I give it a nine. I might even go as far as a nine and a half. Yeah. Um, Close falls. Uh, yeah. Getting out of finishers. High drama. Good. Good storytelling in the ring. Mm -hmm. um, Do you like uh, Punk wearing the purple and black tights? Yeah. Kind of like to pay homage to the old school Undertaker. Yeah. And. and this actually had, of course, I think it could have been a longer build, but had a decent build to yeah. it. There's a reason for them to be fighting. You know, Punk's been disrespecting him, and you know, especially after the death of his manager, it, it there was a reason for them to be fighting. There was a, an emotional investment there, and that's what's missing in so many matches today. But you Great know, match. I, I knew these guys were going to turn it on, and, and they did. Yeah. And, and even with Punk fighting through injury. Right yeah, and you know Taker is Almost up there, years. up there in years, and only wrestles once a year now, and he still, you know, outshines the house now. <laughs> most yeah. of the guys on the roster. And the crowd was into this. Yeah, um, and you know, no big surprise here. The streak stays alive, but at least it was a really good match and entertaining to watch. Um, yeah, that to me probably match of the night there. Uh, then we get Triple H and Lesnar. Now I like this one. It it wasn't bad. I, I was I was slightly disappointed in it. I I wanted a little more blood and guts because you know it's not going to be. Uh, you, you know you're not getting a technical match here. You know it's going to be a brawl going into it, and that's fine. You know the occasional brawl is is okay, man. But you know if you're going to do it, man, do it all the way, man. They, yeah. there should have, they should have been just covered in blood and just, it it could have been better, it, but it wasn't bad, you know, the, uh, he kept getting him in that arm lock and then, the lock, yeah. and then, uh, <laughs> slammed on the steps three or four times, yeah, um, Pretty decent match, pretty decent ending. Uh, I'm not knocking it. I That's just eight out of ten, roughly. Yeah, I'd probably give it probably a little bit lower. I'm, yeah, I'd probably give it a seven. But you know, I just I wish a little more gore there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's mania, man. Both were looking really good, performing yeah. at a real high level. You yeah, can tell they really got in shape for this. Yeah, so I was actually 100 percent effort, 110 percent effort. Uh, it didn't surprise me out of Triple H, but I was actually a little bit surprised out of Lesnar. Yeah. I thought he was going to be rusty, and he, he didn't look bad. No, he, he really was, didn't. He right. um, but, yeah, not a bad match. Um, and then... Just deflated the whole thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I... The match itself, as far as wrestling, I mean, I'd maybe give it a five. Um, neither one of those guys are that great. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as wrestling goes, uh, they're they're great they're great showmen. I'll, I'll give them that. I even have to give that to Cena. He's a great showman. He's a hard worker, um, and, and from all accounts, a nice guy. 
but I just problem. I just don't like him. I mean, I just don't. He, he's uh, he, oh man, I can't even begin to tell you how much I hate him. But and, and no, no heel turn by him. Yeah, no, no I mean, I, yeah, it's just kind of he I, beat the rock clean. And yeah. that's kind of it. Then they're hugging and kissing all over each yeah, other. Yeah, holding each other's hands up. Yeah, the whole thing was just kind of anticlimactic. Um, you know, Cena comes out to a just sea of booze. It's so apparent everywhere they go, people are sick of this guy. Yeah. And you're going to put the belt on him again? It just shows how out of touch McMahon is with a good portion of his fan base. You saying it's that or you think he's just slapping us in the face? Oh, I think that's part of it too. He, you know, he's not going to let the fans dictate to him. Yeah. You know, he, he'd do it just out of spite. That's, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, just to slap us in the face and say, ha ha, screw you all uh, I, I expected Cena to win, but I expected there to some be... Some kind of controversy. Yeah, some sort of controversy. And there wasn't... And like I said, then there was a big schmooze fest afterwards, all shaking hands and hugging. And, and, and I don't know, I think man. last year was better. Um, I don't know. Uh, that, that last match just took the wind out of my it, 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 would, it did put a damper on the whole night. But, you know, for the, you know, five-year-old to, you know, 12-year-old demographic, it probably made their night. So, I don't know. Uh, I, I was just really disappointed the way it ended. Uh, so, overall, what, what kind of grade would you give Mania there? Uh, well, with the two, uh, the big matches of Punk and Taker and... Lesnar and Triple H, I guess I would give it a seven. Without those matches, maybe a four or five. Yeah. I mean, without those two matches, I'd be chanting, give me my refill. <laughs> I mean, you want refill this. Yeah, I... Uh, it's like you got a year to, to plan this, and that's the best you can come up with? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't get it. I mean, even Cena giving the referee a low blow. Anything, to, just yeah. a little bit of controversy. Anything, yeah. Or you know, say the Rock goes to shake his hand, he spits in his face. Just yeah, something like that. You know, anything, but nothing, nothing, nothing. Just, yeah, and, and these guys have been, you know, insulting each other for, for two, years. two solid years. Yeah. Um, and Rock is just gonna. I mean, I don't know. Anyhow, that's that's Mania, yeah. and now we're on to the following nights, Monday Night Raw, which is at least, was, in my opinion, a step in the right direction to yeah. kind of yeah. wrong some of the, yeah. I mean, right some of the wrongs of the night before, because um, usually, you know, a lot of times it seems like the the Raw immediately after a, a pay per view is kind of slow, but pretty big night on Raw. Yeah. Um, it opens up with Cena, of course. Another anti-Cena crowd. Yeah, I mean, it, he was just, the boos were deafening. Oh, it was awful. Same old shit and, chance. And I'll tell you what, this, this crowd was rowdy, man. Yeah. They, they were, uh, I believe I heard JBL say a large portion were Europeans yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. I, uh, they were in the Meadowlands, but, mm -hmm. uh, I guess a lot of people had come over from, uh, from Mania or whatever, but, uh, they were Wow. Yeah, it was a it was a wild crowd, man. I liked it. Um, it. And did you catch when he was talking about doing his little dance? He was like, you know, how about a twist? How about this? How about how about a heel turn? And, you know, like mocking people like us who thought there was going to be something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then, like you said, the same old shit chance start up. Um, he says he's going to defend his title tonight. Mark Henry comes out, Cena accepts his challenge, and, you know, this is where I'm thinking, well, maybe it made sense that he goes over on Ryback, uh, but then, of course, Booker comes out and ruins it all and says he makes the matches, and says you got to beat the guy that you could have a shot at the title with, but you got to beat yeah. him first to be the number one contender. Yeah, he's got to beat Cena in a non-title match first, and then he'll get a title shot, um, so that's going to be later on in the card. Then we get uh, Daniel Bryan versus Big E Langston. Uh, kind of a short match. Uh, wasn't a whole lot to it. Big E still looked good. 
Yeah, and he gets the win here. Um, I don't know. I, th I thought it could have been a little bit longer, but uh, anyhow. They had to save time for the Kurt Warner interview. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, not, not much to talk about on that match, but then we get a rematch from the night before. A return match for the Intercontinental title. The new champ, Miz, defending against the former champ, Barrett. Uh, what would you think about the match here? I thought it was a pretty good match. Yeah, I, I, thought, good. I thought it was actually better than the, the pre-show match. Yeah, the pre-show match. I really did. I thought it was a, yeah. an improvement. And then Barrett wins. And, hey, man, Barrett regains his title after only one night. Yeah. That was cool because, you know, I, I like Barrett. Um, but, yeah, it, it was a good match. And... You know, kind of unexpected. Yeah. You know, only put it on Miz for a night. It was kind of like, what was the point? Yeah. But, you know, they've done stuff like that before. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I don't really understand the point. But, anyhow, it's the belt's back on the right guy. So, that, that's a good thing. I enjoyed that. Um, and then we see Vicky and Maddox. Backstage, Sheamus comes up, tells Vicky he wants a shot at Big Show. She gives him the match. That was just a botched promo all around. Yeah. I can understand what he was saying all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but then we see Orton approach Booker backstage. He wants a match with Big Show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he talks Booker into overruling Vicky. And uh, we'll see where that goes. Then... And what was supposed to be a handicap match of uh, Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger against Del Rio. Um, and please, people, I'm begging you. Stop saying what. Stop chanting what. <laughs> stop it. Just stop. It wasn't that funny to begin with. And it hasn't been funny at all for 10 years now. Stop yeah. it. It's annoying. Yeah. And I'm not, yeah, I know you're wanting to annoy the guy that you're saying what to, but you're annoying me. You're annoying a lot of people. Just stop it. It's not funny. It's not cute. It's not cool. Just stop saying what, please. I'm begging you. Stop it. We'll oh. send you a free t-shirt. Yeah. If you, if, yeah. said you could hear a cricket fart yeah it, it was supposed to be handicapped but you know Zeb never even gets in the ring he, he's up on the apron the whole time uh, there's really no point in that um, it, I mean I wouldn't I don't know if I call it atrocious but it was it was pretty pretty bad Del Rio makes swagger tap but you know, you can tell Del Rio had hurt his ankle during the match. Yeah. And um, he gets the win, but you can tell he's hurting. And then the music hits. Ziggler comes out to cash in. Finally, finally, is he really going to do it? And that crowd was about to Huge ju pop. jump out of their seats. Huge pop for Ziggler here. Uh, I'm so glad he's finally getting some of the recognition I think he deserves. Um, and... It actually, for a second there... It looked like it was going to be a whole other match. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a whole other match. It wasn't just a quick lay on him, he's done. Um, Del Rio put up a fight and actually threatened to you know, actually win it and make Ziggler the first guy ever to try and cash in and not win the title. Yeah. But he got it. Ziggler wins. Zigzag. Is that what he calls it? Famous yeah. or zigzag? No, it was the arm, wasn't it? He uses the famous sir, but his zigzag is kind of like that yeah. reverse kind of neck breaker thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ziggler gets the win. So glad to see that. Uh, and I hope they actually give him a significant run with the bell. Please. Yeah. Please. He deserves it, man. Uh, so, that, you know, that's another highlight. Um, so, right there, two, two events during Raw have excited me more than pretty yeah, much yeah, anything man. on Mania. Um, then Taker makes his way out to the ring. Mm -hmm. And and what the 
hell was this all about? You know, earlier in the night, the Shield had you know said they were going to do something historic, or they had twi tweeted that they were going to do something historic. They hadn't even said it on the show, but um, the Shield comes out, surrounds the ring, and you're wondering, are they going to jump in? Is and take is leader? Taker their leader? And but before anything can get resolved, Kane and Brian run out for the save, even the odds. And even then, I was still kind of wondering, is Taker going to turn around and choke slam one of these guys and turn on them? But the shield backs off. Backs off, and so you're just kind of left wondering there. Um, and then we get our truth, Zack Ryder, and Santino versus the three and B. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, really? Because I, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, finally, finally, three and B is going to get to win a match. Nope. Nope. They job them out to these three clowns. You I see mean, a Santino screaming and making those yelling noises. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and nothing against those three guys. I mean, they they can wrestle, but I mean, they're not even a normal regular team. They're all kind of clowns. And for once, you could actually put three and B over, and you still have them job out to these guys. It's like, man, come on, give these guys a break, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, crap. I mean. It, and it, I don't know. I just, I maybe we're the only two people who actually kind of like three MB. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially Slater and uh, Slater and McIntyre. McIntyre. Yeah, Jinder Mahal. Because uh, Slater's got some good mic skills. And and McIntyre can wrestle. Yeah. And, and, and Mahal and, needs to go. Yeah. Like just, just get him out of there. Just make him two MB. Yeah. But uh, anyhow. Then we see Seamus and Orton backstage. You know, Orton's all, well, i got to make this right because I was the one who said we should trust Big Show. Blah, 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 blah. And Seamus says he's got this. So then Seamus comes out of the ring as if he's going to be fighting Show. And... I thought, you know... It's like I didn't understand because Cole says, hey, fans can call in and vote who they want to see face the big show. Yeah. And I guess I was mistakenly under the impression that that meant whoever won the vote was going to get to fight big show. Yeah. But that wasn't the case at all. The, the It was just a vote. They were just taking a poll, you know. Yeah. Um, because Vicky and Booker come out and pit Orton and Sheamus against each other, and whoever wins gets to face Big Show. Um, but it was a good match, I thought. It, it was okay. Um, this is when the but, weird chants. Yeah, the chants were just random. Yeah. Like they start chanting RVD and JBL, JBL, Michael Cole. They, they, <laughs> Uh, chanted Jerry for the king <laughs> there for a minute. I didn't remember they were doing the wave. Yeah. Uh, Lo Yo -lay. What was that chant they were doing? That the, soccer chant or whatever it is? Well, and they... Uh, yeah, the, I don't know, man. It's like they just passed acid out to the crowd. And just yeah, said, this, crowd, had it. this crowd was crazy, yeah. man. It was fun, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, they had a had decent match going, like you said, but then Big Show comes out and pummels both of them. Just mops Orton all over yeah. the arena. <laughs> Which I enjoyed that. <laughs> um, Orton will get him back. Don't yeah, worry. yeah. It, show will get what's coming to him. Uh, but yeah, the, the crowd, man, I, I wish all crowds were this fun. But uh, It made just the whole match even better than it was. Yes. Yeah. Fun. Uh, but yeah, I didn't catch the Olay. They, that might have been an art ring about honor. Oh, it was last night. Uh, no, oh, but I, mean, oh, they, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. do that Olay yeah, yeah. chant a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they used it a lot more for uh, Generico, El Generico. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, yeah. now he's in WWE developmental. Yeah. Um, probably will be for life. So. But you know, I like this big show. I mean, this is what they yeah. should have been doing with him all along. Yeah, I liked how you know afterwards he was like, "Look, I tried this route." It, it doesn't work. Now I'm just worried about the big show. You know, he needs to be that kind of mean character. Uh, I think it works for him. Not having Vince's face showed up his ass. Right. Hell in a cell match. Uh, so, 
Yeah, that, that match was a throwaway. I'd say that ends up being a three-way dance at some point in time, maybe the next pay-per-view. Uh, then we get Fondango against Kofi. Uh, the match didn't get far at all. Jericho, Jericho runs out, beats the hell out of Fondango. He beats the dog <laughs> shit out yeah, of him. Yeah, he, he, he beat him pretty good. I'd uh, say the other return match is extremely. Yeah, that, that that's not over by any means. Like, like a submission match, something like that. That would be cool. Yeah, because um, he put that walls on him hard last night. Yeah, get the refs to pull him off. Uh, yeah, Echo broke him. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, Jericho uh, beat him pretty bad, but Fondo get, gets the win by DQ, so yeah. he's two and zero. Uh, then Heyman talks with Josh Matthews backstage again. Heyman always entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, then we get the eight-person mixed tag we were supposed to get that got scratched from the Mania card. Um, tons of funk with the Fungodactyls against the Scholars and the Bella Twins. Um, have you uh, have you caught this uh, move that Naomi's using? They're calling it the rear view, where she jumps up and hits him in the face with her ass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the rear view. Yeah. Um, Coming to you soon. What's funny, though, is that you're probably too young to remember Iceman King Parsons. Yeah. But the Iceman wrestled for world-class wrestling out in Texas, and he used the same move years ago, but he called it the butt-butt. <laughs> Instead of the headbutt, it was the butt butt. So she she's brought back the butt butt, but now she's calling it the rear view. I'm sure she doesn't even know who he is. She probably don't. Yeah. Unless somebody has told her. You know. Well, that's WWE. That's a wrestler. They probably don't know who he is either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, old Iceman Parsons. He he was a world class champion at one point, actually. Uh. uh Team Funk gets the win here. Uh, not much to really go over there. Just kind of filler. Um, then we get the Cena versus Henry non-title match. Um, Cena wins by count out. Yeah. It's like, what was the point? Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> I don't know. Then, you know, Henry attacks Cena after the match. Ryback comes out, seemingly makes the save. Uh, he even helps Cena up, but then clotheslines him and shell shocks him, which yeah. that was cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ryback just went up on my cool chart by many points there <laughs> by doing that. Uh, you think it's going to be Ryback and Cena for the title of Extreme Rules? It, if not at the Extreme Rules at some point, Maybe yeah. Maybe Raw before then. Because um, he said he wanted to defend the title on Raw, so. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it's almost too late for Ryback. You've done these all six straight pay-per-view matches. Yeah, it's like, it's almost hard to take him seriously as that monster anymore. But the crowd's still behind him. Yeah, I mean, he, he's he's still got a pretty good uh, following. Yeah. But, and hell, I, I'd cheer for him over Cena any day. Oh, yeah. No, not, I'd cheer for Kali over Cena, for God's sake. <laughs> I'm not a huge Ryback fan, but anything's better than Cena. But you know what? I'll tell you what's just discourages me the most about this WrestleMania and Raw is no Antonio Cesaro on either show. Yeah. Not even the Raw after. The yeah. United States champion. Yeah, I mean, it's bad enough you're going to leave him off Mania, but at least give him a, a good match the following night. Yeah. I just, it's, it's almost criminal. The way they're <laughs> they're treating Cesaro, yeah. I I don't get it at all. And I would say it's because he's a Ring of Honor guy. And, but See, that's bullshit, though. If that's the way Vince. Thinks, but you yeah. know, of course, it, it took some time. But you know, there are Ring of Honor guys getting pushed. I mean, Punk's a Ring of Honor guy. Yeah, hell, and even before he was a main event guy, they had him win two uh, Money in the Bank matches. Yeah, back to back. Yeah, back -to -back. Uh, Daniel Bryan's a Ring of Honor guy. Yeah. You know, it, it, so I don't think there's really that stigma anymore. Uh, and, you know, Punk 
one of my favorite moments on Raw in, in the last 10 years was that first time he cashed in and, and won his first world title. Uh, <clears throat> that, that, was a, that was a cool moment. Uh, but, you know, overall, not, not a bad Raw. Like I said, a, a much better Raw than it was a Mania. Um, and I, I mean, I'm not, you know, I just don't see much exciting happening from here on out for a little while. Well, and, and, and you know, here's another thing, you know, we watched Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor 7 on Friday night, and then, you know, two days later on Sunday, we're watching WrestleMania, and it's just, after watching Supercard, the guys on Mania just look like they're moving in slow motion. Mm -hmm. It's like <laughs> a bunch of slugs in the ring compared to the high impact style. And it, I mean, just those guys in Ring of Honor are just full tilt all the time, just going at it. And, I mean, they put so much into every match. And it, it, I mean, and I've been to their TV tapings before. In same way. Same way. You, you know, think it's a lot of just producers and agents, whoever backstage is trying to hold on to every single synchronization that they do and say, don't do this, you got to do it this way. I yeah, mean, is that, I mean, because I mean, they got the guys. They do, it, but, you know, that's why guys like, um, you know, Justin Gabriel are being held back. Like, um, one of the reasons, like, Juventud Guerrera didn't last mm -hmm. is because they wanted him to tone down what he did. Mm -hmm. and I just... I can't understand that way of thinking. Why do you want somebody not to show everything they can do? Yeah. That makes no sense to me at all. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why slow it down? Why, why do that? It's, it, it just doesn't make any sense at all. You know, the, these guys can do so much more, and these matches are just kick, punch, kick, punch, you know, into the ropes, arm drag, leg drop. I mean, they... And they don't build up anything for them exciting anyway. Yeah. I mean, Rhodes, Sandow, Cesaro, Kingston, Barrett. I mean, even Miz, for God's sake. Yes. You know, Miz is decent. Ziggler, finally. But what, shit, he could lose it, you know, next week on SmackDown. Yeah, you really don't know. I mean, uh. <laughs> they just continue to beat us to death with John Cena. And I'm, I'm sick of it. Yeah. Quite frankly, I'm, I'm tired I, of it. I, I've gotten to where I can't hardly stomach to watch him. When he comes out, I want to change the channel. The only reason I keep watching is because i got to cover it for the show. Mm -hmm. um, if it weren't for that, when Cena was out, the channel would be getting changed. Hell, we couldn't even watch the Cena promos every week, and nobody would probably know the difference because it's the same old shit every yeah. time. We'd say, crowd went into it, they booed him out of the building, it sucks. Yeah. I mean, it's different than last at, week. at some point, you know, Vince is going to have to realize that we're done with this guy. Um, he, he's going to start losing money, don't you think, before too long? At some point, it seems like he would. I mean, maybe not. I mean, for all I know, I mean, like I said, it's it's the younger crowd and the girls that like Cena. And, you know, maybe he's still their top merchandise seller. Maybe he's selling just that many T-shirts that, you know, that's why he keeps getting put on top. Uh, maybe guys like us don't buy enough merchandise, but <laughs> I, I mean, I, I do if it's you know worth buying. Yeah, uh, <laughs> or if they're real champions. Yeah, uh, I I don't know, uh, but you know, but eventually he's going to go away. <laughs> I mean, if, if they turn him heel, maybe quite possibly I could sing something there. You know, but well, you know. It, it could work because I was never a Hogan fan, ever. And, and I was in that age group that should have been. Mm -hmm. But for my age, I was already kind of advanced as far as I watched wrestling Perception. for, you know, I liked the good technical wrestlers, man. I mean, I liked, you know, Steamboat. Steamboat was my guy. And uh, the art form that really is only still... Alive and breathing because of Ring of Honor. Right. If you really sit back It really mind. is. And it's just, I, I don't know. But, you know, 
Hogan, I, I never liked him, even in his heyday of Hulkamania. I never bought into the say your prayers, take your vitamins crap. I, I never liked him at all. His matches were all the same. Uh, but when they turned him heel for the NWO, he grew on me. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. He was, he actually grew on me. He still couldn't wrestle with the crap. Mm -hmm. But as far as his character, I was like, this is entertaining. Because mm -hmm. he just, he was such a jerk. Yeah. And, and it fit. Mm -hmm. He was good in the role. So, if they turn Cena Hill, I might be able to stomach him too. I don't know. I, I will never be a fan of his. Yeah. I, I'll never cheer for him. But I might be able to tolerate him. Yeah, it's like, yeah. finally, they turn him into the jerk that he really is. You know. If you look at it this way, when was Hogan at his height? 89, 88, 89, and that late 80s. Any, really, any time between 84 and 1990, yeah. Hogan was... I mean, just then, it. Then he kind of went away a while, really, for a few years in the mid-90s. So he was that role for, what, seven, yeah, eight he, years at his peak? Yeah, like I mean, he he wasn't gone for too long before he popped up in WCW. Um, but you got to think, they've been shoving Cena down our throats now for 11 yeah. years. Yeah. And he's the same guy that he was back then. And yeah. I just don't understand it. Yeah, I don't either, and I, I never will. Uh, I mean, even if I liked Cena, I would yeah. be sick of him by now. Even I admitted Ork was getting stale, and I right. like Ork, right. but he's getting stale. You can have something. too much of a good thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always liked Flair. Yeah. But, you know, there were times it's like, okay, you know, put the belt on somebody else for a while. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know... It, the whole Cena debate, I guess, is something that'll never get settled, and we're just gonna have to live with the fact that he he's the top guy for right now. But uh, you know, we could probably do another whole show just bitching about Cena. But anyhow, he he's the he's the top dog at the moment. And uh, one thing before us, we sign off, taking away from Ring of Honor than WrestleMania than TNA. Ring of Honor's number one. By w, far. WWE's number two. And TNA, well, yeah, well, who gives a shit? TNA, and, you know, they could be really good if they just had people who knew what they were doing um, as far as, you know, backstage booking the matches and stuff like that. They've got the talent on that roster. And you see flashes of, you know, brilliance there. Uh, but it's just, it's overruled by just crap. Yeah, I mean, um, and, you know, use your two hours a week a little bit better. You know, more in-ring action, a little less talk. Um, and, you know, TNA could be a competitor. But that about does it for this week's show. We're about out of time. Don't forget, we've got an email address set up. We'd love to hear from you guys. Drop us a line. Let us know what you think of the show. Give us any suggestions, comments, topics of discussion. It, you know, we just love to hear from you. It's tpwshow at gmx.com. Drop us a line. Um, we may even do a thing here soon. We, we may give away a t-shirt or something to the, to the best email. Uh, but yeah, we, we love to hear from you guys. And that about does it for this week's show. Till next week, I'm Electric Eric Davidson. This is Ace Larson. We'll see you next time.